Ezekiel chapter 41 Then he brought me into the sanctuary and measured the doorpost, six cubits wide on one side, and six cubits wide on the other side, the width of the tabernacle. The width of the entry was ten cubits, and the side walls of the entrance were five cubits on this side, and five cubits on the other side. And he measured its length, forty cubits, and its width, twenty cubits. Also he went inside and measured the doorpost, two cubits, and the entrance, six cubits high, and the width of the entrance, seven cubits. He measured the length, twenty cubits, and the width, twenty cubits, beyond the sanctuary, and he said to me, This is the most holy place. Next he measured the wall of the temple, six cubits. The width of each chamber all around the temple was four cubits on every side. The six chambers were in three stories, one above the other, thirty chambers in each story. They rested on ledges, which were for the side chambers all around, that they might be supported, but not fastened to the wall of the temple. As one went up from story to story, the side chambers became wider all around, because their supporting ledges in the wall of the temple ascended like steps. Therefore the width of the structure increased as one went up from the lowest story to the highest by way of the middle one. I also saw an elevation all around the temple. It was the foundation of the side chambers, a full rod, that is, six cubits high. The thickness of the outer wall of the side chambers was five cubits, and so also the remaining terrace by the place of the side chambers of the temple. And between it and the wall chambers was a width of twenty cubits all around the temple on every side. The doors of the side chambers opened on the terrace, one door toward the north and another toward the south, and the width of the terrace was five cubits all around. The building that faced the separating courtyard at its western end was seventy cubits wide. The wall of the building was five cubits thick all around, and its length ninety cubits. So he measured the temple, one hundred cubits long, and the separating courtyard with the building and its walls was one hundred cubits long. Also, the width of the eastern face of the temple, including the separating courtyard, was one hundred cubits. He measured the length of the building behind it, facing the separating courtyard, with its galleries on the one side and on the other side, one hundred cubits, as well as the inner temple and the porches of the court, their doorposts and the beveled window frames, and the galleries all around their three stories opposite the threshold were paneled with wood from the ground to the windows. The windows were covered. From the space above the door, even to the inner room as well as outside, and on every wall all around, inside and outside by measure, and it was made with cherubim and palm trees, a palm tree between cherub and cherub. Each cherub had two faces, so that the face of a man was toward a palm tree on one side, and the face of a young lion toward a palm tree on the other side. Thus it was made throughout the temple all around. From the floor to the space above the door, and on the wall of the sanctuary, cherubim and palm trees were carved. The doorposts of the temple were square, as was the front of the sanctuary. Their appearance was similar. The altar was of wood, three cubits high, and its length two cubits. Its corners, its length, and its sides were of wood. And he said to me, This is the table that is before the Lord. The temple and the sanctuary had two doors. The doors had two panels apiece, two folding panels, two panels for one door, and two panels for the other door. Cherubim and palm trees were carved on the doors of the temple, just as they were carved on the walls. A wooden canopy was on the front of the vestibule outside. There were beveled window frames and palm trees on one side and on the other, on the sides of the vestibule, also on the side chambers of the temple and on the canopies. Ezekiel chapter 42 Then he brought me out into the outer court, by the way toward the north, and he brought me into the chamber which was opposite the separating courtyard and which was opposite the building toward the north. Facing the length, which was one hundred cubits, the width was fifty cubits, was the north door, opposite the inner court of twenty cubits, and opposite the pavement of the outer court, was gallery against gallery in three stories, 
In front of the chambers, toward the inside, was a walk ten cubits wide, at a distance of one cubit, and their doors faced north. Now the upper chambers were shorter, because the galleries took away space from them more than from the lower and middle stories of the building. For they were in three stories, and did not have pillars like the pillars of the courts. Therefore the upper level was shortened more than the lower and middle levels from the ground up. And a wall which was outside ran parallel to the chambers. At the front of the chambers, toward the outer door, its length was fifty cubits. The length of the chambers toward the outer court was fifty cubits, whereas that facing the temple was one hundred cubits. At the lower chambers was the entrance on the east side, as one goes into them from the outer court. Also there were chambers in the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east, opposite the separating courtyard and opposite the building. There was a walk in front of them also, and their appearance was like the chambers which were toward the north. They were as long and as wide as the others, and all their exits and entrances were according to plan. And corresponding to the doors of the chambers that were facing south as one enters them, there was a door in front of the walk, the way directly in front of the wall toward the east. Then he said to me, The north chambers and the south chambers, which are opposite the separating courtyard, are the holy chambers where the priests who approach the Lord shall eat the most holy offerings. There they shall lay the most holy offerings, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering, for the place is holy. When the priests enter them, they shall not go out of the holy chamber into the outer court, but there they shall leave their garments in which they minister, for they are holy. They shall put on other garments. Then they may approach that which is for the people. Now when he had finished measuring the inner temple, he brought me out through the gateway that faces toward the east, and measured it all around. He measured the east side with the measuring rod, five hundred rods by the measuring rod all around. He measured the north side, five hundred rods by the measuring rod all around. He measured the south side, five hundred rods by the measuring rod. He came around to the west side and measured five hundred rods by the measuring rod. He measured it on the four sides. It had a wall all around, five hundred cubits long and five hundred cubits wide to separate the holy areas from the common. Ezekiel chapter 43. Afterward he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. It was like the appearance of the vision which I saw, like the vision which I saw when I came to destroy the city. The visions were like the vision which I saw by the river Chebar and I fell on my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the temple by way of the gate which faces toward the east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Then I heard him speaking to me from the temple, while a man stood beside me. And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the house of Israel defile my holy name, they nor their kings, by their harlotry or with the carcasses of their kings on their high places. When they set their threshold by my threshold, and their doorpost by my doorpost, with a wall between them and me, they defile my holy name by the abominations which they committed. Therefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry and the carcasses of their kings far away from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement, its exits and its entrances, its entire design and all its ordinances, all its forms and all its laws. Write it down in their sight, so that they may keep its whole design and all its ordinances, and perform them. This is the law of the temple. The whole area surrounding the mountain top is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. These are the measurements of the altar in cubits. The cubit is one cubit and a handbreadth. The base one cubit high and one cubit wide, 
with a rim all around its edge of one span. This is the height of the altar. From the base on the ground to the lower edge, two cubits. The width of the ledge, one cubit. From the smaller ledge to the larger ledge, four cubits. And the width of the ledge, one cubit. The altar hearth is four cubits high, with four horns extending upward from the hearth. The altar hearth is twelve cubits long, twelve wide, square at its four corners. The ledge, fourteen cubits long, and fourteen wide on its four sides, with a rim of a half a cubit around it. Its base, one cubit all around, and its steps face toward the east. And he said to me, Son of man, thus says the Lord God, These are the ordinances for the altar on the day when it is made for sacrificing burnt offerings on it, and for sprinkling blood on it. You shall give a young bull for a sin offering to the priests, the Levites, who are of the seed of Zadok, who approach me to minister to me, says the Lord God. You shall take some of its blood, and put it on the four horns of the altar, on the four corners of the ledge, and on the rim around it. Thus you shall cleanse it, and make atonement for it. Then you shall also take the bull of the sin offering, and burn it in the appointed place of the temple outside the sanctuary. On the second day you shall offer a kid of the goats, without blemish, for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar, as they cleansed it with the bull. When you have finished cleansing it, you shall offer a young bull without blemish, and a ram from the flock without blemish. When you offer them before the Lord, the priests shall throw salt on them, and they will offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. Every day for seven days you shall prepare a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without blemish. Seven days they shall make atonement for the altar, and purify it, and so consecrate it. When these days are over, it shall be, on the eighth day and thereafter, that the priests shall offer your burnt offerings and your peace offerings on the altar. And I will accept you, says the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 44 Then he brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces toward the east, but it was shut. And the Lord said to me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter by it, because the Lord God of Israel has entered by it. Therefore it shall be shut. As for the prince, because he is the prince, he may sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by way of the vestibule of the gateway, and go out the same way. Also he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the temple. So I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell on my face. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, mark well, see with your eyes and hear with your ears all that I say to you concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord and all its laws. Mark well who may enter the house, and all who go out from the sanctuary. Now say to the rebellious, to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, O house of Israel, let us have no more of all your abominations. When you brought in foreigners, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to defile it, my house, and when you offered my food, the fat and the blood, then they broke my covenant because of all your abominations, and you have not kept charge of my holy things. But you have set others to keep charge of my sanctuary for you. Thus says the Lord God, No foreigner, uncircumcised in heart or uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter my sanctuary, including any foreigner who is among the children of Israel. And the Levites who went far from me when Israel went astray, who strayed away from me after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary." as gatekeepers of the house, and ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister to them. Because they ministered to them before their idols, and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore I have raised my hand in an oath against them, says the Lord God, that they shall bear their iniquity, and they shall not come near me to minister to me as priests nor come near any of my holy things, nor into the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations, which they have committed. Nevertheless, I will make them keep charge of the temple, for all its work, and for all that has to be done in it. But the priests, 
the Levites, the sons of Zadok, who kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to offer to me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. They shall enter my sanctuary, and they shall come near my table to minister to me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall be, whenever they enter the gates of the inner court, that they shall put on linen garments. No wool shall come upon them when they minister within the gates of the inner court or within the house. They shall have linen turbans on their heads and linen trousers on their bodies. They shall not clothe themselves with anything that causes sweat. When they go out to the outer court, to the outer court, to the people, they shall take off their garments in which they have ministered, leave them in the holy chambers, and put on other garments, and in their holy garments they shall not sanctify the people. They shall neither shave their heads, nor let their hair grow long. But they shall keep their hair well trimmed. No priest shall drink wine when he enters the inner court. They shall not take as a wife a widow or a divorced woman, but take virgins of the descendants of the house of Israel, or widows of priests. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the unholy, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. In controversy they shall stand as judges, and judge it according to my judgments. They shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed meetings and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. They shall not defile themselves by coming near a dead person, only for father or mother, for son or daughter, for brother or unmarried sister may they defile themselves. After he is cleansed, they shall count seven days for him, and on the day that he goes to the sanctuary to minister in the sanctuary, he must offer his sin offering in the inner court, says the Lord God, it shall be in regard to their inheritance that I am their inheritance. You shall give them no possession in Israel, for I am their possession. They shall eat the grain offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. Every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs, the best of all first fruits of any kind, and every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall be the priest's. Also you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal, to cause a blessing to rest on your house. The priests shall not eat anything, bird or beast, that died naturally, or was torn by wild beasts.